Hey, and welcome to another installment of Geek Out Book Club. Get your pinkies up and your tea glasses in the air, or whatever you're drinking. Uh, we'll be talking Meredith Grand's Octopus Pie, which has seen its uh, first collection with uh, Image Comics, which collects the uh, the first 11 chapters of the webcomic, also called Octopus Pie. Uh, and, you know, we had her on the show this week. Uh, you can listen to that interview. It's awesome. We talk about the comic. We talk about David Bowie. We find out she's not a metalhead. <laughs> really, the whole gamut of things. Um, well, so without much further ado, uh, what do you guys think of the book? And I'm Chris. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm Jake. I'm Josh. <laughs> That's a, and that's I enjoyed like a, it. It's like a throwback to our old <laughs> commentary yeah, old days. School. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to answer your question, uh, I, uh, I I liked it. Uh, as I mentioned in the interview, you know, like I lived in New York just like she did, uh, not nearly as long, but long enough to be exposed to a lot of the same characters. You're, you're saying it still has like a nice timeless feel to exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Or yeah. at least period appropriate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, within within the same decade that I lived there. So like it was it was very much kind of like a call to home even though it uh hasn't been my home for a couple of years now. Uh but like uh yeah, I was like I've I've been to organic grocery stores like that. You know, I've li uh, I've had people just end up on my couch for weeks and months at a time. <laughs> Sam being one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never <laughs> uh, for a full month. But no, <laughs> no. Nicole uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, ha lived on. Uh, actually, she uh, was such a permanent uh, fixture of my living room that she even brought in her own bed and a dividing wall so that she could have her own privacy. Oh, yeah. Um, for like three months. Yeah. Something I find interesting is I, I think that the because she, you know, for, especially for this volume, the later volume she gets, she's got her own colorist, but like for this volume. Mm -hmm. She drew yeah. everything. I really I really uh respect when that happens um and admire it greatly because I can't do any of that. <laughs> um and I think it's it's yeah, it's pretty amazing. And and the fact that she was putting it out on such a consistent basis too, you know. There um, was a period where she'd be putting it updating it like three times a week. Yeah, it's amazing. And like I said, and like Sam like Sam was saying, like she does she she did all of it for this first volume. Um, and kind of going along with Chris, I mean, I, I'm, I never lived in New York. I've visited New York, sure. But on a relatable front, just kind of the, just the daily life and struggles of a 20 something year old, um, are really relatable. Working and, retail. Working retail. Definitely. I mean, that some of that stuff, uh, what we've all kind of done with that, you know, dealt with that before is, a, is something very easy to jump on and relate to. Um, and the book also kind of reminded me a lot of the book, Little Depressed Boy. I don't know if you ever read that, but again, dealing with, um, just being, you know, kind of a an adult, getting into the adult business. Not, no, not the adult business. business. The business of being an adult. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of these books have anything to do with that. Um, that was a, World's oldest profession. Yeah, thing. that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's just... I believe like, they call that the adult industry. Yeah, the adult <laughs> industry. Excuse me. Let me put my pinky up and drink more tea. Mm. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, it, a book that's really relatable um, uh, and and something as real as this book is a real joy to read, uh, and I really love the characters a lot. Um, so yeah, I just it's it's a lot of fun to read, and like I said, um, you know, in your twenties and your thirties, you're going to be able to grasp onto something very easily and relate to this book. Now, Josh, you had been aware of this book before we even like, you know, we're starting to do our our prep for the interview and everything, and like for, well, like you knew of Octopus Pie, yeah, certainly the web comic, yeah, which I mean it is, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's in a nice, beautiful um, collection. Um, so, I mean, what, what, what are your thoughts on, on it? I mean, as far as, you know, the, uh, the style of it and the, the themes throughout it, yeah, it was all very, very relatable, um, almost to a point of where some of it was kind of hard to read just because of how relatable it was of just kind of like, yeah, I really understand all of this. Seeing them go through like this, like existential quarter life crisis. Yeah. Um, trying to find... Because I, I find, like, every time you go through, like, when you're done with high school, you rediscover, for a period of time in college, you're rediscovering who you are in college. Yeah, and there's there's a part of that, too, that is so great because it's this breath of fresh air that you get to reinvent, reinvent yourself. And mm -hmm. when you're out of college, you reinvent yourself 
We, you now it's like now it's the real deal. <laughs> now it's the majors. Sticks. Now it's the majors. <laughs> the the adult business. Yeah, the, the adult <laughs> business. Yeah, you hold, you had a whole lot of you know trial runs, and this is going to be the final product that's going on the shelf. Yeah. Well, I don't know if if uh, if if celebrities taught me anything. You still have plenty of characters to choose from as you get older. <laughs> David, if David Bowie it's taught true. me anything, if Madonna has taught me yeah. anything. Yeah. Every time you put out an album, they're beautiful works yeah. in progress. Exactly, and so am I. And so is this book. Yes. <laughs> um, to bring it back. <laughs> to bring, yeah, to bring it all back home. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a funny read, but it's, yeah, I think the book that it reminded me personally the most of was actually uh, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. 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 Uh, kind Definitely of, the art style, too. Yeah, same kind of uh, cartoony style. Um, though, whereas uh, Brian Lee O'Malley, I don't want to say relies on, but it's, it makes up a big part of that narrative is the pop culture references, the video game kind of culture to it. Mm-hmm. This one is more kind of rooted in not that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there were moments, I remember taking little notes when I was reading on my phone of things I liked, like little moments where there are t-shirts throughout the book, like uh, uh, um, um, Marek at one point has a Darth Vader number one dad shirt, just little things <laughs> like that that I really liked, you know. And he's your favorite character. Yeah, he's awesome. He's your favorite dad. He's Yeah, <laughs> yeah that too, yeah, if we're talking about Darth Vader. Um, but Marek, yeah, um, there's, I guess, you know. Is it because you can't see his eyes? You can't see his <laughs> eyes. Got a rockin' beard, well. and he's Polish. <laughs> so all those things. Um, you can see my David eyes. Krause. I have a very <laughs> pitiful beard, and I am Polish. So I'm like two thirds Marek. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm not as cool as him, and I'm not wearing a Darth Vader shirt right now. Yeah, um, my beard is. Oh yeah, nice. <laughs> I will say this uh, collection is like over 200 pages, but like Chris was saying, it doesn't feel like two 200. No, pages. Yeah. the, the, the blue. The, Blew through them. These kind of books, the book didn't blow. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> let me rephrase. The these kind of books. One, it's like this might sound really stupid, and me being like an idiot, but it makes you feel super accomplished being able to read like that many pages and enjoy it. You're like, I read 276 pages today. I finished the New Yorker crossword yeah. in three weeks. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it's only the Monday one though. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, like, Not yeah, the weekend. <laughs> we've been, you know, we've been reading. Uh, uh, you know, this is our second, you know, official book club. But you know, we've been all reading similar books together for a while now. And this is uh, one of the first times I remember Sam had posted something on Facebook. And like I said, we've liked all similar books, but I remember I hadn't read any of it yet. And you were like, this book is awesome. Like, you have to check this book out. Like, you were freaking out about it. Well, to the point where I was like, I want to draw like this. Because, a lo- and I think I mentioned. I, I saw the I Kermit, noticed, I, yeah, I Kermit style. Your, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mentioned uh, earlier in our interview with Meredith, I was like, you know, I'm a big fan of Tartakovsky. And I think she, you know, she, we were talking about Dexter's Lab characters and mm-hmm. how they're kind of. Uh, some of the characters kind of remind me, and uh, I guess unconsciously her within that narrative. I didn't even think of that until you, when you mentioned during the interview. But it's totally there. The Tartakovsky characters are so he's kind of artistically or similar, very kind of curved, not very detailed, but not to its. You can still when say the lead character Eve gets pissed off, mm-hmm. even though it's a relatively simple, for lack of a better term, drawing. Yeah. You can tell she's pissed off. Yeah, the the paneling and the the way it's laid out is really well done too. Like. They'll do a thing, for example, um, I don't want to like, spoil certain things, but they zoom in on her face at one point where she's like devastated, and it's literally just like two eyes and a mouth, but it's like you feel exactly what she's going for. And so there's that real great um, uh, complexity and simplicity, simplicity, which, again, put your pinkies up. You're going to sound yeah. super mm. artsy. Mm. Mm, pinkies up, boys. Yes. But, yeah, no, I mean, seriously, I, I, I enjoy that a lot. I mean, that's going back to when I, we were really getting into, like, Todd McFarlane and stuff. Yeah. The way that pages are laid out mm-hmm. is just as important as the way it's colored, the way it's drawn, and, and she does a really great job at that. It's it's sort of minimalist in, mm. uh, in like, de- uh, detailed features and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, like, the, the, the environments still have plenty of detail you know it's not uh like just like a blank canvas uh like a um an xkcd uh mm-hmm. comic or something like that but like um but in the terms of like you know the the the, the shapes uh you know uh, i think minimal minimalist would probably be a a classier you know pinkies uh, pinkies, pinkies up, up boys. Here, uh term than uh, than simple and less of a uh, negative connotation yeah. where you don't have to be like well i mean yeah, not simple, but si- but minimalist. Yeah, mm. to the postmodern. <laughs> mm. <laughs> to jump into the like, because you guys were talking a lot about New York. Like the one thing that made me f- like again, I've never lived there, but visiting it and feeling 
like a New York moment is when I can't remember the exact the moment. Minute. Is it, yeah, is Ooh. it is the exact moment in the book where I think Eve is walking outside. Maybe Hannah's there too, and there's a guy in the background. Like, and the dialogue is like light gray, so you know it's not something you're supposed to be focusing on. But he's like, "Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention," <laughs> and I was like, "I've been on a subway, or I've been out where you know the New Yorker just starts yelling oh, out." We've like, lo- I'm sure we've lost. Yeah, day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember we were going. At New- Sam and I were at New York Comic Con. We were on the subway and. A woman just started screaming the bi- like Bible verses mm. up and down, and I was like, "That's very there. much that moment." I've yeah, been there. that's that was my proud like. I feel like I'm a New Yorker for a second. I, I should have asked her during our interview if she was sad that Doctor Zismore is retiring. I need all you know. We fingers crossed. We did talk about because the cool thing about Octopus Pie's partnership uh, with Image is that every month through at least April. Maybe May. Because yeah, she said there's four said, volumes? I think she said April or May. Yeah, because if it's four volumes and the first volume comes out Wednesday, February 17th, which means you should pick it up in comic book shops and bookstores everywhere. Mm. Um, we'll try to get her on for, like, you know, volumes two, three, and four. Because, yeah. you yeah. know, metal accusations aside. Definitely talk about metal, yeah. Yeah, she seemed to have a good time. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I mean, you can bring up the, yeah, I, when you linked me to Dr. Zismore. Cause that was like I remember Zismore! we were you and me were sitting like on the uh, on the either there was something on the ACE it, line. It was, it was probably the A because I lived off of the A. Yeah, we're t- going to your place up in uh, Hamilton Heights, and I was just looking at this like angry. We can call it Harlem to make me sound cooler. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did it work for the Clintons? No. Okay. <laughs> so we're riding the, the subway up there, and like there's just this angry like like dermatologist, dis- a disappointed yeah, dermatologist. Yeah. Looking it, at me, yeah, uh, and then and, and then rainbows and stars and <laughs> and and really poor, uh, uh, poorly chosen before and after pictures because like it was like oh she's wearing makeup <laughs> but not so much she has clearer skin <laughs> and, and and just just a, a graphic designer's worst nightmare but something about it so. So so uh, so beautiful. So indelibly New York. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and and, uh, and so much to the point that when Nick Kroll had his show, and he made a uh, fake uh, or he made advertisements for his uh, for uh, for the show for Kroll show, yeah, yeah, the yeah the Nick Kroll show or Kroll show, whatever it was called. Um, he parodied ads, and Doctor Zismore's ad was one of the ones that he parodied. End of an era, man. End of an yeah. era. Ah. But uh, I'm glad a- that I got to appreciate it, <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> That's a slice of yeah. time. But the um, yeah, it's a it's a great book. It it you don't have to live in New York to get it. I think you just have to have been somebody that's like survived their twenties, mm-hmm. <laughs> or at yeah. least, or maybe are in their twenties. Mm-hmm. It has though. I feel like almost any age. I feel like you know teens would kind of relate to it sure. too because it's like imminent. There's still angst. Yeah, there's still angst, and there's pot, and there's you know. All sorts of stuff. Ducks. 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 Mm. Mm. Ducks. What is it? The fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah, and I, that was because I'm not used to even. I'm not used to comic strips. I don't read a lot of web comics. Uh, like suddenly, like I don't. I'm not used to that language in a in a strip. Yeah. And suddenly, like yeah, but more, <laughs> more used to like uh, the uh, the the um, family circus. Cal- type. Calvin and Hobbes. <laughs> Calvin and go. Hobbes. Yeah. Okay. Calvin uh, and Hobbes. Yeah, the that that for me is like the top. I mean, of, it is of the strips. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one, oh shit! You <laughs> know, it's it's really good. It, I think it appeals. Maximum fucks. To, maximum fucks or no fucks given. Mm. 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 <laughs> Got anything burning you want to add, Josh? Nope. Or are Not. you just burning? You're burning. You're burning for us. Yes. Bing bing ding 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 ding. ding, ding. Yeah, it's Blue Oyster Cult. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm really upset that Bernie Sanders isn't using that as his like rally song. Burning for you? Yeah. With the U replaced by an E? Yes. Like his first yeah. name? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Well, you guys got any final parting thoughts on Octopus Pie before we... Pick it up. Read it. Yeah. Enjoy it. Check yeah. it out. Like I said, February 17th, bookstores... Comic stores, store stores, everywhere. Store stores? Depends on the store store. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of stores. Comixology. Comixology, baby. Um, and of course, uh, stay, com- oh, sorry. we'll stay updated on the strip too on octopuspie.com. You can get some cool uh, and 
it, it's really it's it's just an awesome. I can't recommend this book enough. This was one of those ones I just couldn't put down when I started it. Yeah, the only thing that caused me to put it down when I started reading it was I was like, oh shit, I have to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> A viable reason, if any. Yeah. But yeah, man. So this has been another installment of Geek Out Book Club. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Jake. I'm Josh. Keep reading. <laughs>